Okay, good afternoon everyone. Thanks for coming along uh, after lunch. Uh, my name is Rob and I'm here uh, to present a little bit about uh, Alchemy Pay, the fiat crypto payment provider that I'm with, uh, and also a little bit about that entire sort of sector and how things have moved on, let's say in the last sort of 12, 18 months, something like that. You know, a lot of what has been a crypto winter for, for a lot of people, you know, in the world of uh, payments, in the world of bringing together and bridging crypto and fiat, there has been an awful lot of progress. And I think what it points towards as well is a kind of bigger idea, which is that crypto is becoming more accepted as a, as a kind of norm uh, within our society. And as a result, we're seeing financial institutions, governments uh, actually interacting with this new form of finance, this new form of um, tokenization as well. So I think it's been actually a very exciting time. Also, I think for some of you here who are developers, um, which are, a lot of you are at ETC, maybe some useful things to kind of find out about, you know, what differentiates different on-ramp providers, what else you can do, what else can be built around your project, what else can be included on your platform. Um, so hopefully it'll be of use to you guys. So first of all, I think I've got a bit of an issue with the Oh, no, it came out okay. I thought the resolution was bad. So, yeah, just, just a bit of a background on us. So, we originally uh, began in Singapore, is where we were first founded. Guys, uh, all the way from, from places like MasterCard, PayPal, uh, yeah. HSBC. So, payments backgrounds, digital payments experts uh, founded Alchemy Pay. Uh, since then, we've gone on to expand in a, in a huge way. We actually began with crypto payments for merchants, and we were the first people in 2019 to launch... Uh, a system that allowed merchants uh, online and in-store to accept uh, crypto payments and then get paid out in their local fiat currency, but also able to use the same system to accept fiat currencies as well. So the idea that you could accept both crypto and fiat using the same payment system. Since then, we've gone on to um, pivot towards things like on-ramping and crypto cards, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, NFT checkout, um, various kind of aspects that, that give projects more versatility, more usability, more functionality for their users and for their community. Um, so yeah, another thing is because we came from Singapore, uh, this is really where alternative payment methods, digital wallets, people having wallets on their phones, this became uh, a really uh, big thing for us, the idea that we could see this happening in Southeast Asia, a really big uh, impact it was having on the digital payment market. So uh, we've been very quick to try and integrate as many of those different kind of payment methods worldwide. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. Uh, as you can see, you know, we're, we're firmly in the camp of believing that, you know, although Visa and MasterCard, fantastic, they're not the only ways that people are paying and definitely not, you know, maybe in Europe, maybe in America, it feels that way, but actually there's a lot more going on globally in terms of different payment methods. So that is important also for us to, to be able to, to support people and allow them to pay with the methods that they want to pay with. So the idea of meeting them where they are. So yeah, um, 2024, right now we're looking at some really exciting new uh, developments, not just crypto to fiat now and fiat to crypto, but actually fiat, fiat exchanges we're able to provide. Uh, Multi-fiat account opening for, for Web3 enterprises, for Web3 projects, for Web3 businesses, which are really going to streamline uh, your systems, your payments, um, and fiat crypto transactions, of course, remain as the, the main focus for us. But yeah, on-ramping for, for user experience simplicity, I think is really important. You know, it's important maybe to explain the difference between a payment gateway such as ourselves and exchange. You know, we are a non-custodial non uh, payment solution. Essentially, we are licensed to be allowed to receive the payment from the user, fiat yeah. payment, let's say, for an on-ramp, uh, and then at that point we then go and source the, the tokens from uh, our liquidity providers and then have that sent out to the user, usually to their own uh, wallet, sometimes to a, a centralized wallet of the project as well. So. Um, the idea is different from, from a, a, an exchange, an exchange, of course, being a, a custodial of your assets. This, I kind of feel, uh, this is a, an on-ramp that could be integrated onto your platform, onto your website, onto your application. Um, and it means that users don't have to come to your site and then realize very quickly, oh, well, actually, I need to leave again and go to a, an exchange and figure out how to get this token. You can sell your token directly on your website, you know, or any tokens. You know, so it's in terms of user simplicity and a, 
you know, breaking down less and less steps, less barriers to entry, I think on-ramping is a really good option for a lot of Web3 developers, a lot of Web3 projects. And, you know, the past year, I think the, the uptake um, and the, the growth we've had has really shown that as well. So, yeah, uh, the past uh, sort of 12 months have been very successful. You know, we built a lot during the crypto winter. Uh, we remained, you know, on course with a long-term focus. And, you know, certainly the, the end of last year, the beginning of this year, has shown that that kind of faith in the, in the environment, in the scene, uh, has really paid off. So, yeah, on-ramps are more and more uh, available, or you're finding them more and more on uh, Web3 projects, platforms. And so I think maybe you're kind of getting used to the idea of that kind of real usability. And, of course, as we can see, users as well. Um, really happy to, to use an on-ramp rather than necessarily always have to go away to an exchange. You know, everything has its place, but certainly on-ramps are, are a certain convenience for a lot of Web3 projects. So, of course, you know, the idea of accessibility and bridging the gap between fiat and crypto is not just a one-directional thing. You know, uh, an on-ramp going from your local fiat currency to a crypto token, that's fantastic, it's very useful, but real accessibility also means going in the other direction too. And I think, again, over the last couple of years, the amount of currencies that we're now able to support, the amount of countries that we're able to uh, send money back to uh, the, the user, either to their, we can top up their, their debit card, their Visa, their MasterCard, or we can have it sent directly to their bank. So there's a real usability there that has improved drastically over the last sort of year and a half. So again, more positive um, developments during what was considered the crypto winter. So really exciting as we're going forward, you can see some of the new payment methods that we're now able to support and we're getting towards. So automated clearinghouse payments in the USA is a huge thing. And I think if you don't realize that now, you know, that is a, a possible system, a way in which you can buy uh, so you can buy crypto using the ACH payment system in the USA. That's a, that's a real game changer over there. When you're using a, a, a domestic payment system, you know, something like SEPA, I guess, a lot of us are used to here, you're talking about uh, transactions processed locally, um, reducing the risk, reducing the fees associated with them, higher levels of uh, transaction success rates as well. So I think it's a really... Uh, it's a really positive time when you start seeing the, the, the ways in which various payment systems are working with crypto uh, payment providers. You know, again, that idea of society really beginning to, to, to see crypto as a legitimate part of, you know, your financial space, the, the payment space. And then, of course, we've got the crypto card there on the right. So this is another thing. We've really seen Visa and MasterCard move into the space in a big way, have a lot of positive things to say, supporting certain projects. Maybe some of you guys know um, about projects who are working directly with Visa, directly with MasterCard, having uh, direct relations with them. You know, this is something that maybe three or four years ago, sort of unheard of, not, 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 not expected at all. So yeah, the crypto card solution, uh, it's, a, it's a white label solution that anyone can, uh, that a business can uh, issue to their users, to their community. The dashboard for that card, the top up, everything would be on your website, would be on your app. Um, really uh, an absolutely top way to, to bring new users in, to get good uh, references from, from word of mouth. People saying, you know, finding this really usable way to actually spend their crypto in an everyday uh, scenario. Um, not just online, but offline too, you know, a physical card, or, or a virtual card. You know, both options are possible, Visa and MasterCard possible. So we've, uh, one of our cards, or our card is on Binance Marketplace uh, and has been doing really well. I think it's been in the top five for, for just about every week um, since, since it's launched. So it's been a really powerful, um, useful tool for a lot of users who um, are using the Binance Marketplace as well. So yeah, keen to say this is, you know, this is going to be branded with your branding, your, your project's uh, logo, your project's name, and really helps build functionality, maybe for your token, maybe for your community. So really a, a, a big step forward, and it just shows how much Visa and MasterCard are interested in this space. You know, we've got a quote here from uh, the global head of crypto and blockchain at MasterCard. We are here to enable customers, merchants, and businesses to move digital value. Tradition, traditional or crypto, whatever they want. It should be your choice, it's your money. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the idea that you should have the options to be able to pay using the payment methods you want, you use um, the systems you want to use, that we meet you where you are. 
rather than the other way around. And the idea that this is global, not just something that works for people in, in Europe or, or North America, but works for everyone all around the world. So yeah, here, a few details about the, the virtual and physical card. I mean, the virtual card, I think, is an exciting thing. We can do a very low-level amount of uh, value uh, per month um, in a non-KYC situation where a user has not done the KYC, just a very basic uh, email address. Of course, that's really just to lower the barrier to entry. Ultimately, you want to do KYC because then you can do up to $100,000 worth of transactions every month, which I think is pretty impressive. And again, three or four years ago, I don't think anyone thought that was going to be happening. You know? So yeah, physical card, virtual cards, this is something that I think we're going to see more and more projects really taking on because it really does build out the functionality of your project, that is for sure. So yeah, also we can see, I mean, a lot of you might know about the um, Visa's work uh, with the, the Paymaster Flow um, uh, initiatives that they've been working on. So really rethinking digital transactions, account abstractions, really abstracting away uh, the need for, or the inconvenience, let's say, of paying gas fees on every single transaction, you know, that's being abstracted away. And so, yeah, I think probably a few of you maybe know projects who are working with Visa on this. And I think, again, shows that, you know, the traditional finance is moving more and more into this space and accepting that crypto is part of, you know, the global um, scene of payments. So, yeah, another thing, digital banking for Web3 projects. So the idea that you could actually open and operate multi-fiat accounts. Now, this is going to be really useful for streamlining your cash flows, yeah. um, keep everything, your, your um, accounts, much more convenient, much more in order, give you much more versatility, much more um, adaptability to various situations, maybe as your, as your business changes, as your business develops, as you grow, as you pivot. You know, the idea of multi-fiat accounts, I think, is a really important one, too. And yep, multiple bins, okay, bank identification numbers. This is something that, again, give you more um, options, more possibilities, more ways of um, strengthening your product, of making your product more global, making it more available to global users. So I think very powerful stuff um, to actually have that aspect of traditional finance included in your business model. And then, yeah, of course, none of this is happening without, you know, crossing the, the T's and dotting the I's in terms of regulations, in terms of traditional finance, in terms of regulatory bodies and making sure that everything you're doing or everything we're doing, you know, obviously we have one foot in crypto, one foot in, in traditional finance as well. We need to be very careful about following the letter of the law everywhere we're operating. Um, and so the, the more licenses we have, the more possibilities we have, the more services we can offer, the better the fees will be, the lower, the more competitive the fees are, the higher the possibility, the higher the, the transaction success rates as well, which is, I know, something that, that people have often held up, you know, the difficulties with having attempted transactions failing on you. And I think this is something that, again, that risk level, the, the risk profile of crypto is coming down and down slowly. So we should see a continuation of fees coming down, transaction success rates going up. So yeah, for us, um, very close now to a number of different certain licenses also already hold uh, UK API, uh, a number of states uh, in the US. We have money transmitter licenses, Indonesia, Lithuania, a number of different places and, and more on, on the way as well. So really, again, I think this shows that traditional finance, the traditional world, that governments, regulatory bodies are taking this seriously, are looking into it. And, you know, it is becoming more and more accepted. Um, and as a result, what you can do with your projects, what you can do with your platform, what you can offer your users, much more versatile, much more, um, much richer experience, I think, for them as well. So, yeah, really a fantastic time for the, for the, the crypto, fiat crypto uh, payment gateway space right now. So uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. If you have any questions, uh, you're more than welcome to come and chat to me.